Start, unlock, start, unlock, start, unlock, start, unlock, start, unlock. Hello, I'm Garrett, and I'm going to be playing a video game. Let's do this. Alright. This is Death Road to Canada, a slightly Oregon Trail-esque game. And I say slightly because it's more than just an Oregon Trail clone, as you will see. My favorite aspect of the game, you can make people, as in friends, original characters, you can even try to make characters from other things. I am playing the game with my buddies who I know in real life, because I have friends. Let's do this. I hear rumors that Canada is a safe place, free of the threat of zombies. With nothing to gain from waiting around in Florida, he decides, me specifically, to brave the death road and travel north. The goal? Get to Canada. Try not to die. This game features a lot of resource management, so that's where the random number generator stuff comes in, because along the way, you pick locations to loot. Because looting is very rewarding. I'm gonna choose House on the Road. Alright. Let's check out who we've got. I am Garrett. My trade is City Seeker, which normally I choose another thing like Charming, because I'm a very charismatic person in the real world, but um. Your perks and traits affect gameplay, and I chose City Seeker because it gives a higher chance of encountering some rare locations and the such, which makes for a more enjoyable gameplay experience. And I'm covered in dirt. John is a warrior and a martial artist because of all of my friends, he is the most ready and well-equipped to kick ass. And I guess he is always spouting pop culture quotes. The little description is one of those randomly generated bits of information about your characters. So that's neat. Alright, let's do this. Enough grave. talking. So as you can see, it's got a uh, art style that makes it easy to run. Which I appreciate, because when I first started playing this, I had a really crappy laptop without a video card. So this art style was a blessing. It's also quite en endearing. It's, it's minimalistic, it's adorable, I like it. It's not too restrictive for something as minimalist as it is. I apologize if there's gonna be periods of silence while playing this. See what I did there? I added periods of silence for emphasis. I'm very clever. But uh, yeah. There will be moments in this game where it will require my full attention, because even though this is a Oregon Trail-esque game, there is gameplay, as you can see. And since I'd rather not get my friends killed, there will be moments where I will shut up and focus purely on not dying. So, most people eat two food each day, so Five food is enough to feed us for one day and a little bit more. A day and a quarter, if you know basic math. But yeah, you loot for resources, you manage your resources, and you hope you can get by and make it to Canada, which is the promised land, where supposedly there are no zombies. And along the way, you'll have random stuff, and you have to make decisions. Tell scary stories would raise group morale, but you'd also be tired, and tired is a stat that lowers your skill points and your attributes, or whatever you call them. And it's a big detriment, because you don't want to be tired. So we're just gonna sleep, because I mean, look at us, we're happy. And we find beeping, boop, boop, beep, beep. There's also a kazoo in there somewhere, what could it mean? Alright. Hmm. Let's drive to it. Okay, we lose 63 gas and get 10 food. 
and we've got a lot of gas, okay. Not enough to make up for our loss of gas, though, but that was still pretty good. Alright. Lost safe house, good for looting. Bookstore, you might be confused as to why that would seem like a viable option, but bookstore is a, you read a book and you can get better at certain things. Your, uh, things that you level up. You've got strength, shooting, wits, attitude, composure, loyalty, morale, medical, mechanical. As you can see, you find out what you're good at as you play through, but your perks and your traits also affect them slightly. But, uh, I will go for the location that ensures the gathering of supplies, because I feel like that's a little bit more important than being really good at anything at this point in the game. So, I don't know about you, but, um... I have mixed feelings on zombie games in general. Um... Zombies are that kind of thing where I want to say they're cool and interesting, but media is kind of just so oversaturated with them at this point that I'm kind of sick and tired of them and I'm burnt out. So I'm at a point where even like good zombie movies, I'm kind of just like, eh, it's just a zombie movie. With some exceptions like Shaun of the Dead and Day of the Dead. A few other of the Romero films, which uh, this might sound like sacrilege, but not all of his zombie movies are good movies. Um, I'm not too fond of Dawn of the Dead, which, even though I know is a good movie, it's kind of eh, not for me. Although I think Day of the Dead is an absolute masterpiece because it's one of those few movies that he has made that not only looks great and is atmospheric and really intense, but it's also got a message equally as strong as all the visual stuff going on. Which I know that, like, Night of the Living Dead and Dawn of the Dead, they have their messages, but I don't feel like any of those movies were as well put together as Day of the Dead. But, uh, there was a period of time where the zombie craze died out, and then Shaun of the Dead came around and sparked a new interest in zombies by doing something completely different by making a zombie comedy movie. And I feel like a bunch of movie writers and producers looked at that and thought, hey, zombies are back. And we can't actually get to the safe house because there's garbage. That is awful. Um, a lot of these layouts are randomly generated, so... That's purely just bad luck. And we can't even circumnavigate- oh, no, we can, okay. I apologize, I didn't think the map was this wide. False alarm. <laughs> but, uh, Shaun of the Dead came around, made people interested in zombies again, and then they started making zombie movies that were just zombie movies. And I think people kind of missed the point in what made Shaun of the Dead so successful. Because even though it had zombies in it, it wasn't a zombie movie. It was a romantic comedy. It's a breath of fresh air. And, like, you still had, like, high-quality, well-made zombie movies come out around that period, like, that remake of, uh, Dawn of the Dead. But again, there was nothing to that movie other than it was well-made and a zombie movie. And I feel like if you're gonna do something with the concept as warm at, worn out as zombies. You should do something with it other than just be like, oh hey, it's a zombie movie. Same with video games. I know I'm not the only person that feels this way, but I'm also not a majority because, again, the craze is still going on and things are unnecessarily putting zombies in them for no bloody reason other than people like zombies. I think the weirdest example is Red Dead Redemption having... Is it a zombie spin-off game, or is it just like a DLC for the game? But regardless, 
She's like, oh, hey, here's a game about redemption and being an outlaw in the Wild West. Wanna know what it really needs? Zombies. It's just, I, I don't know. I appreciate this game, because even though it's got zombies in it, it almost seems like a background element of the game. Because it's a very comedic game, and so much of the game puts your focus on resource management and taking care of your compadres that the zombies really are just a background element, and more like a plot point than a force of evil. They're kind of just there to give you a reason to try to get to Canada in the first place. Uh... Well, if I chop wood, someone will get stronger, and I like getting the stronger. My strength was revealed to be eh, but now I'm- oh! Oh, the fire feels great, people are happy. But I'm tired. John giving good advice. Every once in a while there'll be a siege, which is like you have to fight an entire horde of zombies. And that's normally when you have to use uh, a fraction of your stockpile of ammo. Because if you're going to use that at any point in the game, it's definitely going to be sieges. Otherwise, it's kind of a waste. Kind of, meaning there are exceptions, of course. So, text is reading time. The group finds a street in a town that has traps all over it. Hits with blankets, but over the top. Snares everywhere. Spikes on a barrel, a door with an obvious guillotine over it. These are just the visible ones. Send a scout to explore for loot. No, I'm not gonna willingly put any of my friends in danger, even if this is just a tongue-in-cheek zombie simulator of sorts. And, of course, you can come across a chair camp, which you use food as currency because you can't eat money. Let me freeze that. If you eat money, why? There's never really no reason not to do this. This person is selling gun training. Which... Food is kind of... Important. Ah, we could spare some, but I don't know how rough the roads ahead of us are gonna be, so... I'm gonna be frugal early on. Because normally if you come into a trader camp, the best stuff you normally find in the late game, when you are expected to have a stockpile of many food. I'm sorry if you just heard that my cat jumped on my keyboard. Not right now, baby, I'm busy. Bless her, she's 18. Alright, no, gas is kind of important too. And I've been putting off talking to my good friend, Don, And... I'm not gonna lie, there's not a lot of perks that I could find that really described him as he is in real life, so I decided, ah, eh, let's make him a pseudo-white mage. But he definitely is an anime fan in real life, so... Let's recruit my homeboy, Yidon. Now that's an extra mouth to feed, but hopefully he can pull his weight. If not, we'll have to struggle together. And, of course, he gave us medical supplies when he joined, too. Okay. The group finds a new person, Angelo. He is alone and wants to join the team. No. Alright. As to be expected from me, Don. And here's a siege. Okay, I've gotta stay alive for an hour. Hopefully my friends, too, but... No guarantees. And of course, Idan being an anime fan, he's got a katana, which I'm not even gonna talk about because that's the whole can of worms I'd rather not get into. Alright, I should have been paying attention to what time it is, but I don't think I'll need a flashlight. Yeah, okay, we're good. This is a good place for a siege up. A strong strategy since you want to conserve your resources and ammo. It's really good to just circle around them and kind of herd them into an easily manageable and avoidable herd. So if you have a siege location where you could just go in a giant circle, it's best advised you do so. 
Or at least that's the strategy that I've come across. That I find the best, I should say. Come across just makes it sound like I read it somewhere. This circle strategy isn't working so well. The zombies keep coming out of the blackness, darkness. The darkness, blackness. But, it's okay, we can go now. But, uh, I want to thin out this group of zombies so I can go inside the cabin and loot a tad bit more. Also, you've probably noticed if you've played this game before that, uh, the music you hear isn't the music that's found in the game. I, uh, heard somewhere that, uh, the music composer for this game is kind of a jerk, and some videos have been taken down in the past simply for having her score or his score in it. So I decided to mute the in-game music and put in my own choice of music. Which, as of playing this, I don't know what I'm gonna use. So that's fun, we'll just have to see. But, uh... Also, I should have mentioned that, uh, there's a good chance that this playthrough is gonna stay unlisted. Um, I told my friends that since I'm gonna be making them, I'd let them watch it unlisted before deciding to make it go public, and if I'm gonna make it go public, I'd need their say in it, because, again, I'm portraying them in a video game, so. Also, not all of my friends agree to have their likeness put in this. So there's only enough friends I made in this to fill an entire party. Okay, so every time you survive a siege, you get hopefulness and you have inspiration to become better. So morale makes people happy. I can make Idan stronger, but I mean, why would I focus a single person out when I could make everyone get a random skill gain thing? Or heal people, which we don't need actually. Or make everyone a good shoot man. Gonna check morale. Uh. Morale is not important, but. No one needs healing, and. I normally don't give shooting stuff to everyone in my party. I like to hog all of the guns for myself, because I'm a bit of an ass. So, morale and random skill game. Every day is a great teacher as long as you don't get eaten. That is true. Oh, also, you earn Zombo Points, which is uh, an in-game currency you use for unlocking traits and perks so you can have more options when making custom characters in the game. I'm so happy! <laughs> okay, the group sets up a camp outside a grocery store. They notice another camp has been following them and will probably attempt to loot the place. Send someone in to loot them? Uh, yeah, I like screwing people over. I bring back some food. Sweet. I can always rely on myself. Oh! That is not good, okay. Going on foot's pretty much a death sentence, because, uh, you're likely to run into bandits, and bandits will screw you over very, very a lot. But, uh, okay, let's have John climb a tree. Okay, he's, he's a happy boy. That's good. The group is fortunate to find an abandoned cabin in the woods to stay the night. Idan is super happy too! We're all happy guys! Without a car, the group is a sitting duck with bandits. The group is ambushed by awkward bandits that apologize for the robbery. They are likely new at this. Well, 12 food out of how much? That's a little more than half our food, that's... And if we choose to fight, everyone would take one damage. Uh... I mean, we need to feed ourselves for 12 days. We've got medical supplies coming out of our ass, and... What is Edon's medical skill? It's not telling us. 
Nah, he's our white mage, we'll be fine, let's fight. Alright, we all got hurt, but it's fine, because Idan has a first aid kit of plenty. Also, it's dark, which means that someone needs to bring a flashlight. No, not Idan, what am I doing? There we go. I don't trust other people with guns because the follower AI doesn't know how to save ammo. I say passively aggressive to no one. Alright, I think we're good. But yeah, if you don't have a flashlight and it's dark, you can't really tell the silhouettes of zombies from your friends and you can't see them coming. So if you drive off and you don't notice that one of your friends isn't in the car, you'll just leave them behind to die. And that's never fun. Because even if it's just a video game, I always feel a little guilty if I leave one of my friends to die in a dark tunnel. And here's a King of the Hill reference, Groovy. Alright, we got gas, we got car. We only had one bath to encounter. Oh, never mind. Uh, food fight, or let's jump it and risk totaling the entire car. But I mean, ah. We still haven't healed yet, so I don't wanna. What the hell happened to Edon? Hold on. Edon Chan is a magical anime girl. He seems to be getting more anime by the day. Since when? <laughs> Holding lovely wand. Excuse me? Uh. Okay, that's a new development. Dawn's a girl now. Huh, okay. I'm sorry, that that caught me off guard. Uh, what's happening? Jump it, why not? That sound is a bad sound. Oh no! No! is killed too. Well, uh... That... That sucks and a half. <laughs>